sign of Al Mahdi. And when you see the sign of black flags, then how critically important this Mahdi is. The Prophet says, then go and make bay'ah, go and take bay'ah upon the hands of Al Mahdi, even if it means you crawling across ice. Crawling across ice. Have you crawled on ice? You can't get more than five meters falling down. Rasul of Allah is telling you, it is so vitally important to believe in Al-Mahdi and to take bay'ah upon his hand that if he meant you crawling across ice just to get to him, just to take bay'ah upon the hands of Al-Mahdi, then do that because I am instructing you to do that. Okay? Now, let's go to the story of Al-Mahdi. What is going to happen to Al-Mahdi? Right? Number one, firstly, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing the story a little bit there. I'm going forward a little bit, I'm, then I'll rewind again. Imam Mahal Mahdi, when he's instituted as the leader, as I told you, he'll become a global leader. And you know what the biggest <coughs> obstacle that will be overcome after 1400 years of divisions, inshallah ta'ala, with the mercy of Allah, is that finally, once and for all, the Sunni Shia conflict will forcibly come to an end. Because the one, Imam al-Muntadhar, al-Mahdi al-Muntadhar, whom the Shia faction is so eagerly awaiting, and whom the Sunni faction are so eagerly awaiting as the awaited one from the family of Rasulullah will come. And at that time, whether it's from the Sunni faction, whether it's from the Shia faction, if any one of them disagrees with that Mahdi, when all the signs are there, then according to one narration, Imam Jalal bin Suyuti, anyone who rejects Mahdi will die on kufr. The Sunni Shia schism will come to an end. Finish, khalas. Al Mahdi is here. And Wallahi al Azim, I swear by Allah in this masjid today, lots of people are in for a shock. There'll be lots of people that will accept him on face value because they see all the signs. But when they see all the signs, they're all fighting. You know, uh, he's going to be of our aqidah. He's going to be of our ideology. Will he subscribe to our school of thought? Will he subscribe to our thinking? All of a sudden, what's going to happen? All of a sudden, some of the biggest enemies of Al Mahdi will be the so called scholars who will oppose him. The people who think they know it all will stand and say, No, you can't be the Mahdi. You can't be the Mahdi. And they will reject him. And they will die according to the narration of Jalal. They'll die in the state of Kufr. That's number one. Number two, even if from the Shia group, they'll have no choice. Because what is going to happen? I swear by Allah in this masjid, Al Mahdi will resolve the conflict. He said, What are you fighting about? What are you fighting about? About the Khilafat of Abu Bakr Siddiq? About the Khilafat of Umar ibn Khattab? There's no issue about it. I'm the Mahdi. If you accept me, then you will accept them. There's a problem. There's a problem. Then you're going to get the Kharijis. Oh, the Kharijis are another different story altogether. I'll come to that very quickly, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> Can you imagine what's going to happen? Okay, and just in passing, before I forget that day, he'll not only bring the Sunni and Shia factions together and unite them under one banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? According to one narration in Tirmidhi, right? One of the signs of the appearance of Al-Mahdi will be Raya to sue the black flags which will come from the east. And those black flags will not stop until they reach Ilya, Jerusalem. Meaning, Jerusalem will be, we are we're crying about Palestine now. We're crying about Al-Quds now. Jerusalem will be conquered by the Muslims, inshallah. I mean, in the era of Al-Mahdi, alayhi salam. I mean, I mean. Right? And do you know what else Imam Jalal bin Suyuti said? And I'm basing this on his authority. This was from Tirmidhi. Imam Jalal bin Suyuti said in the Habib al Fatawi, he says there, he says, one hadith he narrates there, he says, Al Mahdi, when they conquer Jerusalem, Al Mahdi will go to Lake Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. And around the sea, near the Sea of Galilee, Al Mahdi will then bring out the Tabut al Sakina, the Ark of the Covenant. Quran speaks about it. It's the very same Ark of the Covenant that the Jews are looking for right now as a sign for them to rebuild the Temple of Solomon. But they won't find it. Allah will make Al-Mahdi find it. And when Al-Mahdi finds it and he shows them the Tabut, the Sakina, the vast majority of the Jews will see this and accept Islam. Yeah. 
with the exception of a handful. The hadith says with the exception of a few, because these Zionists, I call them Zionists, will die in a state of kufr in the year of Masih al-Dajjal, when every tree in Jerusalem will call behind them, behind me hiding a Zionist, kill him. Because the rest of them, by seeing this karama of al-Mahdi, of Tabut, you know what is Tabut is Sakina? Baqiyyatum mimma taraka alu Musa wa alu Haruna tahmiluhu al-Malaika. Right? The asa of Musa alayhi salam is inside. Okay? The sandals of Harun alayhi salam are inside. The turban of Harun alayhi salam is inside. There is a picture. Fi his suwari al-anbiya. Imam Jalal in Sayyuti in Tashir al-Jalal says, In the tabut al-Sakina, fi his suwari al-anbiya. There are pictures of the prophets of Allah. And there's a picture of Rasulullah sitting in tashahud position with sahaba kiram around him in tabut al-Sakina. That's tabut al-Sakina for you. When Jews see this, the vast majority of them, and you have quite a few of these Orthodox Jews, they'll accept Islam and say, hey, this is the Mahdi, he's the, he's the Messiah, promise one. Because they're going to see Isa Isa some anyway. I just wanted to bring that in, by the way. Now, when Al-Mahdi comes, people won't believe in him. The Shia faction won't believe in him. The extremist Khariji factions won't believe in him. They'll declare war on him. I'll come to that just now. Kharijis will declare war on him. But do you know who's the first people? who will take ba'a on the hands of Al-Mahdi. And I want to read these words for you. Okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam stated, mm, let me see the words here. Look, I can't find it right now. I don't, I don't want to take up too much of time. There. But the point of the matter is there, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, there's it here, there's it, there's it, there's it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. He said, رَأَنَّ ذَلِكَ أَتَاهُ أَبْدَالُ الشَّامُ وَعَصَائِبُ أَهْلِ الْإِرَاقِ He said, firstly, they will take forcefully bayah on the hands of Al-Mahdi. And when they forcefully take bayah on the hands of Al-Mahdi, and when they see the black flags coming, right, which is a sign of the arrival of Al-Mahdi, the first people to take bayah on the hands of Al-Mahdi, the words of Sunan Abu Dawud, Abdali Sham, the Abdals of Sham, and Wa'asaibi Ahli Iraq, and the most noted pious people of Iraq will first take bayah on the hands of Al-Mahdi. Not the ulama of Najd, not the so-called fuqaha, not the so-called modern academic scholars. They'll be the first people in a state of confusion. But the people who will first take bay'ah on the hands of Al-Mahdi will be the Abdal of Sham. Do you know who the Abdal are? They are a special category of awliyaullah, friends of Allah. And the hadith, I'm going to narrate it to you. Right? It's narrated, it's, it's a mawkhuf hadith narrated by Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It's a words of, words of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Shuraih bin Ubaid qala, dhukir ahlu sham عند Ali ibn Abi Talib wa huwa bila Iraq. Faqalu, il'anuhum ya amir al-mu'mineen. Curse the people of Sham. Amir al-mu'mineen. He said, qala la. He said, no, I will not curse the people of Sham. Inni sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, al-abdalu yakununa bil-sham, wa huma arba'una rajulan. He says, because the Abdals, the awliya Allah, a special category of awliya, friends of Allah, will be in Sham, and they will number 40 in number. Ali, okay? Al-Abdalu fi Sham, wa huma arba'u. Kullama mata rajulun, abdalallahu makanahu rajulan yusqa bihim. When one passes away, Allah replaces one with the other. So you have 40, Abdal, badal dena. Not to change, replace, to replace. Who are these people? What are the characteristics of Abdal? The Prophet of Allah said, the Prophet of Allah said, Yusqa bihimul ghayth. It is by virtue of them, by virtue of their ibadah, by virtue of the love of Allah that uh, love of that the Allah has for them that Allah sends down rain. Allah sends down rain because of Allah's love for them, because of their ibadah and obedience to Allah. Right? And you are helped by by Allah, by virtue of them against your enemies. And by virtue of them, Allah removes azab and punishment from the people of Sham. And in another hadith, the Prophet said, Their hearts are on the hearts of Ibrahim Khalil Allah Allah removes difficulties from the people of the earth by virtue of these people. These are a special category of Holy Allah. And the first people to recognize him, the first people to know who he is, and the first people to give their allegiance to him because they know what is haq will be the awliya Allah, the abdal of Sham and the asaib of, of, of Iraq. Very critically important because today, today, who are these abdals? Do they exist? Who are these awliya that you people talk about? Wallah, 
In the time of Al-Mahdi, the first people to accept him will be the people of Sham. And the Abdals, the awliyaullah of Sham. Very critical. Now, let's go to the story. When, when will Mahdi emerge? Al-Mahdi will emerge at a time when there is a great deal of fitna and corruption. And in the words of the hadith by Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala, I'm giving you some of the narration, but because of time, I'm cutting it short. Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala narrated that at the death of Khalifa, three princes will fight over your treasure. Our treasure? What treasure? The scholars state that there will be a treasure. And at the death of a Khalif, a treasure will, will, there will be a treasure which three of the princes of the Khalif will fight over. Okay, what is this treasure? This treasure is, according to the scholars, buried inside or in the precincts of the Holy Kaaba. Some of them say it's actually buried inside the Holy Kaaba. And it was buried there by the Banu Jurham tribe, who were the first inhabitants of Makkah al Mukarramah. When an enemy came there to attack them, right, they buried the treasure like they buried the well of Zamzam, which was unearthed by Abdul Muttalib. Okay? But the treasure, which was buried, according to some scholars, inside the Kaaba, is still there. And at the death of a Khalif, I'm praying, it's Abdullah, the, the Abdullah, you know, the new one, the latest one from Saudi Arabia. Right? Okay? There is a fight for power anyway. Wallahu alam, I'm just, I'm just, please. Okay? They'll fight, there'll be a fight for power. And they will fight for that treasure beneath the Kaaba. Right? But none of them will receive it. At that period of time, in this time of turmoil and so on, a man from Medina, because Al Mahdi will be from Medina, will leave Medina and come to Mecca out of fear for his life because people are after him. People are after him. And he will come to Makkatul Mukarrama and he will try and find refuge in Makkatul Mukarrama. Now, what's going to happen there? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith of Sahih, Bukhari and Muslim, Muttafaq Ali hadith narrated by Ummul Mu'mineen Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates that this sneak preview was given to Rasulullah in his dream. And the dream of a Nabi is like Wahi. The Prophet of Allah was sleeping and he became startled. Fa'abid. And Aisha Siddiqa got worried because she never saw the Prophet of Allah become so startled when, you know, he was sleeping and he was dreaming. So she said, Fidaka ummi wa biya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What has happened? He says, you know what? I saw an odd dream. I saw in my dream that a man comes to the Holy Kaaba to take refuge in the Holy Kaaba. But when he takes refuge in the Holy Kaaba, people, an army will be sent out to come and kill him. And there will be some people who will recognize him and forcefully take the bay'ah on his hands between Rukni wal Maqam, between Hajrul Aswad and Maqam Ibrahim in that area. People will forcefully uh, take the bay'ah on Mahdi and say, You have to take the bay'ah. And this is one of the signs of Al Mahdi. He will refuse to accept the bay'ah. I don't want the Samana. I refuse. I refuse. He won't say, No, Jazakallah, thank you very much. He'll refuse until they force him. And then he, they'll force him to take the bay'ah. When they hear that someone is the Mahdi, has taken bay'ah, then an army, and it is narrated by Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala, he's from the Quraysh, and from the Kalb tribe, will send out an army in opposition to Al-Mahdi. He's in the Kaaba. They want to come and destroy him. Why? Because they know he's the greatest threat to all of these scholars for dollars. And the greatest threat to all the corruption in the dunya. So an army of so-called Muslims will be dispatched. An expeditionary force will be dispatched to come and fight Al-Mahdi. And this is one of the greatest signs of the arrival of the true Mahdi. That when that army comes, Rasulullah sallallahu stated, in an area Al-Bayda, which by the way for your information is a suburb, Bayna Makkah Bayna Makkah wal, wal Madina. A, there's a suburb in Makkah called Bayda. And outside Dhul Hulayfa, you know where you may tell your haram in Medina? Outside Dhul Hulayfa, there's an area which is called Bayda. One Syrian scholar has actually taken a photograph of that area, Al Bayda. He says, when that army comes to attack Al Mahdi with the will of Allah, the entire earth will collapse. Rasulullah saw all of this in his dream. Sneak preview of his grandson Al Mahdi. What is going to take place? The, the, the earth will collapse and will swallow every member who is part of that army trying to oppose Al Mahdi alayhi salam. So Ummul Mumin Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala trying to save some of them. She said, Ya Rasulullah. But some of them may have been there, you know, uh, you know out of, you know, uh, just under uh, duress. He said, yeah, then they will, be res they will suffer the same thing. But on the day of Qayyamah, Allah will judge them according to their intentions. Right? So that entire earth will collapse. And when you see that taking place,
If Allah gives us the life to live there, inshallah, I mean, right? Be prepared. I'm taking the first flight out. Inshallah, I mean, make dua, I mean, inshallah, right? Be prepared because the Al Mahdi has arrived. If it means you're crawling across ice, go to him. The army will come and that army will be vanquished. Second army, will be, they'll be vanquished and then you'll see the black flags come. And within that black flag, there'll be people there who will come and support the army of Al Mahdi. He will unearth, he will unearth the treasures of the Holy Kaaba. He will unearth it and he will use that to make jihad. First in the Arabian Peninsula, he'll put all these Arab monarchs out of business first. Then he'll go to Persia, the Iran area, Iran and so on there. He'll go to Persia. He'll put the Iranis right, Not currently. He'll put them right. Then he'll go to Rum. He'll go to the European countries. There's a long story behind it, right? There'll be 80 countries will enter into a, into a truce and a pact with Al Mahdi. And these will be the European countries because they realize, hey, we can't play with this man. He's no Fahad and Abdullah and one of the other, you know, uh, tin pot dictators of the, the Arabian Peninsula. This is the chosen one. They'll come into a truce with them, which they will break at a later stage. And then Al Mahdi will destroy the whole lot of them. <coughs> and the era of Al Mahdi will be so great, right, that the Prophet of Allah said there will be so much of abundance, there'll be so much of wealth, there'll be so much of good that a man will come and he'll ask Al Mahdi, give me, and Al Mahdi will give him without counting. There'll be so much of barakah. And you know who he'll be from? He'll be from the stock of Hussein and Hassan, but predominantly from Al Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Why? Why? There's two reasons. One is a minor reason, one is a major reason. The minor reason is if you look at the one group, one, one, the Shia sect, they, they, they're not too happy with Imam Al Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So that will be a, you know, a, a fitna for them. It will rub them the wrong way. But he's from the Aulad of Hassan, the one who, 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 who seeded. His Khilafah to Amir Muawiyah, they don't say it, but they don't like it. So he'll be from the Khilafah of Hassan and from the Aulad of Hassan primarily from his paternal side. And why will that be? Because Al Hassan radiallahu ta'ala alayhi salam gave up his Khilafah to reunite two fighting factions within the Muslim Ummah. Allah wants to honor Hassan alayhi salam wa radiallahu ta'ala one more time to say, let that child come from your progeny who will unite the Muslim world together. Let that come from your progeny of Al Hassan radiallahu ta'ala. What a time it will be. Wallahi al-Azim, it is narrated in the hadith and is narrated by Sayyidina, these are words of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and narrated by his son Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya radiallahu ta'ala, one of the sons of Hazrat Ali, which you don't know about. Hazrat Ali is narrated in Mustadrak al Hakim, Wawafaqahu al Dhahabi, meaning Imam al Dhahabi also, no, no, solid hadith this is. He narrates there that Hazrat Ali was asked about the coming of Al Mahdi, and Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, mentioned the, the, what will happen with Al Mahdi. He said there will be 313 people when we'll take bay'ah, equivalent to the number of the people of Badr at the time of taking bay'ah with Al Mahdi. 313 of them, the best people on planet Earth at that time. And he said they will be such that each one of them will have no enmity and animosity towards one another, they'll be connected with their hearts. And Al Mahdi will join these people who have a similar vision, who have a similar heart, who have a similar aqidah, who have a similar love for Allah and commitment for deen. He'll join them all together and they'll become an army of 313. And Ali radiallahu who stated that those people, that group, elite group of 313 people will be the best the world has ever seen and will ever see. They will be the best of people and they will be under the, the, the banner of Al Mahdi alayhi salatu wasalam. And Al Mahdi will remain on planet Earth for seven to nine years, around the seventh year. And it will be the most beautiful, most glorious period in the history of Islam, in the history of the world. One man from Ahlul Bayt, as prophesied by the Prophet of Allah, will lead the whole world. Al Mahdi. Do you know now why the Kuffar and the Kharijis and all of them fear Al Mahdi? He'll rule the world. And then there comes a time, and he's narrating the hadith. He says that what he says, he says, in the seventh year, around the seventh year or so, or sixth to seventh year, there will be a period there where in Al Mahdi will come and he will he will conquer. There'll be Malhamatul uh, Kubra. There'll be the Great War, which I think is World War Three, the Great War. He'll fight everybody because all the eighty banners that were under one umbrella, like the United Nations, possibly, right, will fight against Mahdi, and Mahdi will take them on. 
and the Muslims will win. After Malhamatul Kubra, within that period of time, will be the conquest of Constantinople, Istanbul, will be conquered by the Muslim army. And within that period, the conquest of Constantinople will be the straw that breaks the camel's back, and Masih al-Dajjal will appear. And it is narrated that the Malhamatul Kubra and the conquest of Constantinople and the appearance of Dajjal will take place within seven months. Within seven months, Masih al-Dajjal will appear. And then what happens? When Masih al-Dajjal appears, Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu wasalam's task is over because he's paved the way for Ashratul Kubra. And who is that? Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam. He cannot fight Dajjal because that job is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. He will fight with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. He will fight against Dajjal and they will be engaged in a war with Masih al-Dajjal. And during that war, they will be in Damascus, in what we know today as the Umayyad Masjid. And the Azan for Salatul Fajr will be given. Azan will be given. The people will be reciting their Sunnah. And at that time, when Masih al-Dajjal has made his appearance, when Salatul Fajr Azan is given and people are reciting the Sunnah, and it is time for Salah, Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam will descend from the heavens, leaning on two malaika, wearing yellow, clothing, right? Allah, yellow clothing, okay? And his hair will be jet black, right? With such nur and such, you know, like light on it, it will be as if he just had a bath. You know when you come out of the bath and your hair is all curly and so on, he just had a bath, it will be like pearls falling from his, ear, from his hair. The Prophet said to him, he will descend. And when he descends, when he descends, Isa alayhi salam, Prophet of Allah, Ruhullah, Nabiullah, Rasulullah will descend, man. Wallahi Azim. He'll descend. Salah Azan is given. Imam Mahdi, knowing that this is a Nabiullah, this is Rasulullah, this, he was with Rasulullah in Al Mi'raj in Al Aqsa. That Isa, that Isa, Ibn Maryam, Imam Mahdi will say, This is a Nabiullah. Ya Imam, Ya Isa, you may.